Hello there, my name is Tom Carlos and I'm an Inkscape user. I've been using Inkscape for a while to do landscapes and quite often people will ask me how I create my artworks. What I think they're really getting at is wondering how I deal with so many objects and details in my artworks. Typically, slow screen refresh rates and lag or slow response to commands are the type of problems people have with large drawings in Inkscape. Before I show you the workarounds I use, let me illustrate the problems I'm talking about. Now here's an example of a drawing that has lots of gradients. I've zoomed in to do some detail work and as you can see, the refresh rate of the screen is horribly unacceptable. Now here's a second drawing of the same subject and I've zoomed in to this one as well. As you can see, the refresh rate of the screen now is very, very fast. Both these examples I've shown you look exactly the same when you look at the whole picture in Inkscape and they would actually produce a PNG file that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in the resolution. I'll be showing you how to apply this workaround to your drawing, but first let me show you another problem. What I'm showing you here is an example of what I typically do in my landscape drawings, and that is copy and paste thousands of shapes into the drawing. In this case, small squares. As you can see, the rate at which I'm pasting these squares is a pretty good pace. Unfortunately, I end up getting to a point where I have too many objects in my drawing. Now, the refresh rate of the screen is still good, but now I have a problem with lag. I just pasted 10 squares in a straight line, and it took me less than 10 seconds. The squares appear over a long period of time and just drop down wherever the mouse happens to be. This is not practical and just too slow of a process. Even trying to reposition the squares after they've been pasted down is problematic. The lag makes that very difficult to do and time consuming. So I will also show you how to do a workaround for this as well. After much experimentation, I came to the conclusion that it was really the gradients and the amount of items I had in my drawings that were making it difficult for me to make them. Well, I didn't want to give up on Inkscape, so I kept working on a solution. And eventually I came up with one. And that was to make three separate drawings, which I would use to make one final drawing that I could make a PNG file from. Okay, so let's get started on how to do this. In this video, I'm going to refer to these drawings as drawing number one, drawing number two, and drawing number three. What you're seeing on the screen now is drawing number one. I've set the document properties to inches and it's 24 inches across by 36 inches high. I'm also showing a border on top without a shadow. So the key to this first drawing is regardless of how many layers or how many other objects you have, to have all the gradients you're going to use for the entire composition in this one drawing.
Now I export a PNG file from drawing number one and I set the export area to page. Although my final drawing at the end of this process will be exported at 300 dpi, this one will be set to 600 dpi and I'll explain why. Now that I'm finished exporting the PNG file from this drawing, I can close it. I will not have to use it again for the remainder of this process. Now we're going to take this exported file and import it into drawing number two. But first, here is a comparison that shows why a 600 dpi export is being used. The image on the left was exported from an Inkscape drawing that had a 600 dpi PNG file imported into it. The one on the right is from an Inkscape drawing that had a 300 dpi PNG file imported into it. Now, it may be hard to tell from this video, but there is definitely a difference in the resolution. The bottom line is that when you import a bitmapped image into Inkscape, it's pixelated. Now you may get away with importing a 300 dpi image into your Inkscape drawing and then exporting out the final drawing at 300 dpi if your drawing is small enough. In my case, I enlarge my drawings and so in order to make sure I get good resolution, I import a 600 dpi image into my drawing. Now this is drawing number two. I just created it and imported the 600 dpi image into it. And these are the import settings I used throughout the entire process. Image import type is set to embedded. Image dpi is set to from file. And image rendering mode is set to none. In this case, I converted the PNG file into a JPEG before importing it, mainly because the file size was smaller. The imported image is on its own layer and it's the bottom layer. I can now work on the drawing, adding layers and objects as needed. After creating thousands of objects in my drawing, I now start to have lag problems. It's time to create drawing three. I now export a PNG file from drawing two. This is the exported file I will be importing into drawing three. The export area was set at page and the resolution was set at 300 dpi. This is the newly created drawing 3 with the imported image from drawing 2. Now remember, drawing 3 is just an aid that will help us finish drawing 2, which will be the final Inkscape drawing. You'll notice that in drawing 3, I put a small square in the upper left hand corner of the drawing. That will later be used for registration purposes. I can now start working on the drawing. I add whatever layers I think I need and I add shapes and objects which will later be imported into drawing two. Unfortunately, the video capture software I used in the following segments did not capture pull down or pop up menus. So I made images of them and inserted them so you can follow along. Once I've created all the objects I want to copy into drawing two, I select them all, including the registration square. I now group the selected items. After the group selection, it's time to open drawing number two. It seems that the copy function works better when both drawings are open.
after the group is made, I copy it. I now minimize drawing 3 and maximize drawing 2. I paste the group from drawing 3 into drawing 2. I now align the registration square into the upper left hand corner of the drawing. I now ungroup the pasted group. I delete the registration square. Finally, I export a new PNG file to import into Drawing 3. I can now close drawing 2 and maximize drawing 3. And now it's time to clean up drawing 3. I ungroup the group. I delete all the objects, including the imported image file. And leave the registration square in the upper left hand corner for the next PACE session. And now, import the newly exported file from Drawing 2 into Drawing 3. Once you align the imported image into the page, you're ready to create new objects and then import them again into Drawing 2. This process is repeated until Drawing 2, your final drawing, is complete. Now I'm sure that for some of you, this whole thing was about as clear as mud. So let me summarize quickly. I first create a drawing with all the gradients I'm going to use. I then next import a PNG file from that drawing into the second drawing, which will actually be my final drawing. Once the second drawing gets large and cluttered with lots of objects, I create a third drawing and I continue to make objects in the third drawing and then I import the objects from that third drawing into the second drawing. I continue the cycle of importing objects from the third drawing into the second drawing until the second drawing is finally completed. And when I say importing, I really mean pasting. That's it. Now here's a bit of information that may give you a better insight on how Inkscape processes a file. The image on the left is from the final Inkscape drawing, drawing number two. The one on the right was from the initial Inkscape drawing that was created with all the gradients in it. They were both exported out as PNG files at 300 dpi. The drawing on the right with all the gradients has 87 objects in it. It took just a little under two minutes to export the PNG file. While the drawing on the left, the completed drawing, 
That one has 121,665 objects in it, plus the imported PNG file from the drawing with all the gradients. And that only took about 22 seconds to export the PNG file. Obviously, a file without any gradients is a lot easier for Inkscape to process. Well, I hope that some of you found this interesting and perhaps useful. Thanks for watching.